Doctor, I want to talk about treatment one more time. Sure. Uh, if you get someone, best case scenario, early on and are able to uh, establish some treatment protocols, talk about the difference between what might be best case scenario versus someone that just goes untreated and what, you know, someone might, the conditions might be in sure. you know, a year or five years down the road. So what I tell my patients is that um, we have no one magic bullet, we don't have a cure, uh, but if, if my patients are invested and the family members help, and this is a team approach, mm -hmm. and we do this 20 step plan, every time you come into my office, every three to four months, I'm gonna start you on something else. And we're gonna talk on the phone and we're gonna stay in contact and we're gonna keep on uh, we're going to keep on going as long as it's safe and is grounded in scientific evidence and has the potential for benefit and that patient wants me to do anything and everything, we're going to start these things. And if we can start this in a, in a regimented uh, order that I can, that I can oversee and, and, and check, um, I say to patients that for the first year or two, you're going to do okay. Um, we're going to do as best as we can to stabilize this disease. Um, I think expectations are important. Um, it's my goal to have every patient at least try to stay stable for at least a year or two. Um, if we are able to see improvement, that's a win, that's a home run, then we're making progress. Um, if we see significant improvement, that's a grand slam. That means we've done really well. But it should be our expectation just to get on base. I want to stabilize things for a little while. I want to treat the symptoms. I want to do things that will potentially slow down the process. Uh, and I want to at least give the patient every, every option they can to, to do okay. Uh, when someone who's not treated at all, they will continue uh, to decline over time. It's uh, really difficult to say. Some of my patients do really well for two, three, four years. Other patients do pretty good for a little bit longer. Other patients, no matter what I do, six months, a year, two years, a significant amount of decline. And you know, for years I've racked my brain and I've tried and I've said, oh, we've done everything. I've seen you every three to four months. We've talked on the phone. We, you've followed my plan. You've done every single thing I could have possibly asked. And thank you for doing that. But we just haven't made progress. Um, I'm learning about why specific patients improve and don't. And it really, in my opinion, and I don't think we have the evidence yet, I think it's based on the genes. Um, you can have a very specific genetic makeup to where you can do almost everything for Alzheimer's disease, and you're not going to see that much of an effect. Um, I still think there has to be much research to be done to figure this out. Uh, but setting expectations, realistic expectations, are important. And um, all patients do not respond the same to these treatments. Well, getting treatment is so important, and I think we talked about it a little bit earlier, but as it progresses, as Alzheimer's progresses, it leads to other problems, too. And can you talk about what those are and why those other problems seem to be magnified as it goes on? Sure, absolutely. So, and when a patient has Alzheimer's disease at the beginning, they may not be aware of their deficits or their problems with memory, uh, but as they progress, uh, they have a, trouble with activities of daily living. They're not able to take care of themselves. Uh, they're not able to dress themselves as well, take care of the finances especially. Uh, they lose the ability to drive because they get lost or are a danger to others. Um, these are things that require a significant amount of caregiver time, support, and really leads to a significant amount effect of caregiver burden. Um, you know, when you treat an Alzheimer's patient, you're not just treating the patient, you're treating the caregiver, you're honestly treating the whole family. Um, and, and this is what I see every day. Um, it's really imperative to treat aggressively in, in my clinical experience because if you can treat aggressively, we've been able to show that, for example, the combination of FDA-approved medications alone can actually delay nursing home placement by over a year, year and a half. Uh, you know, that's enough to pay for a lifetime of, uh, of medications. It's also enough to, you know, help the caregiver. Uh, we've seen time and time again that uh, caregivers receive so much stress and so much burden. And, you know, I, I see, you know, my cousin, uh, my cousin's husband just, I, I, I feel for him. I, I, I I try to give him advice. I try uh, to, to tell him how important it is to have respite care, caregiver support, taking a break, you know, taking care of themselves. Um, you know, th this is a disease that absolutely doesn't only affect the patient, but it affects the caregiver and the whole family. And getting support groups, uh, getting informed, getting educated, learning about Alzheimer's disease, learning about caregiving strategies, getting family members. Uh, to help and also getting a, a, a caregiver or, or a qualified health professional, an allied health professional, whether it's a nurse's aide or a medical um, uh, caregiver, to come in uh, to help is, is extremely important.